But we are all royalists. All true devotion was on our side. Isn't that so, Villefort? I uh, be beg your pardon, madame. I think you were not listening. My dear, leave them alone. I'm sure they don't wish to discuss politics on the eve of their wedding. Mm -hmm. As Villefort is to be our son-in-law, and as our son-in-law is deputy public prosecutor, I think my observation should be of some slight interest to him. Of the very greatest interest, madame, but I heard you imperfectly. Forgive me, mother. It was I who distracted him. Then I do forgive him. I was saying, Villefort, that the Bonapartists had neither our sincerity, enthusiasm, nor devotion. True, madame. But they had instead fanaticism. Napoleon is the Mohammed of the West. It would be the gravest folly to deny the extent of his influence. You mean his former influence? Today it has no more substance than a shadow. With respect, madame, it is a shadow which still darkens France. Your presumption shocks me, Villefort. Are you daring to suggest that our beloved king is actually threatened by this discredited usurper living in exile. I believe there is such a danger. Monstrous. Dear mother, I beg you. Even here in Marseille, the streets are filled with half-pay officers who would rally to him the moment he chose to raise his standard. I don't believe a word of it. Feel for your for you're a dreadful revolutionary. Oh, my dear, really. I speak my mind, as I always do, but I excuse you. Such sentiments come naturally from the son of a Gerardin. It is true, madame. My father was a Girardin, but he never voted for the king's death. In the reign of terror, he well nigh lost his head on the same scaffold as your father. That may be. But your father and mine underwent persecution and prescription from diametrically opposed principles. While my family remained loyal to the exiled princes, your father lost no time in joining the new government. Citizen Noitier, the Girardin, re-emerged very quickly as Comte Noitier. Senator and statesman. Can you deny it, Villefort? No, madame. I can only beseech you to put aside the past as I have put aside my father's name. I disown his political opinions. He is a Bonapartist called Noitier. I am a royalist called Villefort. I cannot go further. I have not the power nor the wish to separate entirely from the stock from which I am sprung. Bravo, Villefort. Well said indeed. My dear, I forbid you to persecute our son-in-law further. The time has come for a perfect amnesty. <laughs> With all my heart. I've been very hard on you, Villefort. Let the past be forgotten. You see, Monsieur de Villefort, my mother has the kindest heart in the world. Nonsense, child. I'm not in the least kind. I have a proper sense of my own importance, and I expect my family to share my opinions. Were you serious in what you said just now? I seem to have said a great deal. I'm speaking of the usurper. You maintained there was a danger. I'm convinced of it. The number of men accused of plotting his return has risen steadily during the past three months. Most of my own prosecutions have concerned these traitors. Traitors, indeed. We depend on your vigilance, Villefort. Have no fear on that score, madame. I should say not. That last case of yours I attended. Oh, better than the theatre. My dear fellow, you surpassed yourself, Rennie. You should have seen him. Implacable. I wager that the blade of the guillotine isn't sharper than your husband's tongue. The law seems so cold and heartless. Oh, but I was paying him a compliment. When father speaks, he makes you sound like a destroying angel. A graceful exaggeration. My duties compel me to be severe. Then be merciful also, for my sake. Where mercy is admissible, always. Promise me. I promise. With your permission, madame. I am suffered, summoned to the office of the Procureur du Roi. <laughs> kind friends, dear friends, Drinking to the health of our charming bride and bridegroom. May God bless them as I do and bring them every joy and every happiness. Uh, oh, bless him. <laughs> Monsieur Morel, my very good friends. <laughs> I am at this moment the happiest man alive. And so you should be, Edmond. 
to me, happiness had always seemed like those enchanted palaces of our childhood. To enter, you must first destroy the evil monsters guarding the gate. I see no monsters here. Only my comrades, my friends, and those I love. So, you see, I was wrong. A man can win his heart's desire without knowing despair and bitterness. And I stand here thankful to God for his kindness. My love, raise your glass with mine. And let us pledge a lasting affection to all these loyal and generous hearts gathered here for our wedding feast. Oh, I've something more to say. Well, you all know me. I'm not a man to waste time. And as my friend Don Glass said yesterday, we're always in a hurry to be happy. But even so, a marriage does require an official sanction. Mercedes and I had thought to have the ceremony this evening. You mean it's been delayed? No, I do not. On the contrary, within the hour we shall be man and wife. In the hour? The contract, the settlement. How is it possible? Oh, bless you. Mercedes has got no fortune, and I've got nothing to settle on her, so our contract was soon written out. (laughs) Monsieur Morel has made everything possible. And it's thanks to him that every difficulty has been overcome. At three o'clock, the mayor of Marseille will be waiting for us at the Hotel de Ville. Oh, it's our bus tuna. Yes, time to set forth. Our bravo, bravo, Edmond. He's a downright good fellow. Hurrah for Captain Dante. Are you ready, Mercedes? I'm ready. <laughs> What is the reason for this unexpected visit? <laughs> doubtless some mistake which can easily be explained. And if that is so, Monsieur Morel, doubtless some uh, reparation will be made. Which among you is Edmond Dantes? I am he. What is your pleasure, Monsieur? Edmond Dantes, I arrest you in the name of the law. In the anteroom, monsieur. The guard had just brought him in. And the evidence? Did you find the letter? I can't say, monsieur. I simply carried out your instructions. My men searched his cabin on the Faron and his apartment in the Rue Sanac. All the papers they found, I sealed myself in this packet. Without examining them first? Monsieur, your orders were very clear to bring you whatever we might find. I wouldn't want to exceed my warrant. Naturally. That's all. You can go. Thank you, monsieur. Oh, wait. Have the prisoner brought in. Yes, monsieur. Who and what are you? I'm Edmond Dantes, captain of the ship Pharaon belonging to Morel and son of Marseille. Get out. What were you doing when you were arrested? I was at my wedding feast, monsieur. At your wedding feast? Yes, monsieur. We're due to be married in 15 minutes' time. That is unfortunate. I am sorry. Did you serve with the usurper? No. I was about to be called into the Marines when he fell. It is reported that your political opinions are extreme. My political opinion? Yes, yours, Dantes. uh, Alas, monsieur, I don't know anything about politics. I haven't got any opinions. My information is therefore incorrect? Well, my only opinions are private and concern two sentiments. I respect Monsieur Morel and I love Mercedes. Monsieur, are you aware of having enemies? Why should a man of my station have enemies? (laughs) Well, none that I know of. You're about to marry a pretty girl. That might have excited jealousy. I'm sure she is pretty. Our Mercedes is beautiful. Young as you are, you have become a captain. That might have excited the envy of someone you know. Well, that had never occurred to me, monsieur. Well, you may be right. I mean, after all, you know men better than I do. But, well, whoever it is, I'd rather not know his name. You are wrong. In this world, one cannot afford not to know one's enemies. Do you recognize the writing? No. Well, whoever did it writes very well. Well, what a villain the fellow must be. Your enemy is a vile and dangerous man. Now, answer me frankly. Is there one word of truth in this accusation? None. And not in the sense you mean. Well, I'll give you the facts, monsieur. When the Pharaon left Naples, Captain Leclerc was attacked with a brain fever 
Uh, we had no doctor on board and we could quite easily have turned back, but he wouldn't hear of it. He insisted that we kept on and made for Elba. Had you expected to call there? Well, no, it surprised me very much. But the captain was very ill. And on the third day, I could see that he was dying. And he called me to him and made me swear to obey his last order. Which was? To deliver a letter that he'd given me to the Marshal Bertrand at Elba. And you obeyed it? Well, naturally, without question. And he also added that the Grand Marshal might give me another letter in return to deliver in Paris. Did the Grand Marshal give you this second letter? Well, yes, he did. And I was going to take it to Paris tomorrow. Well, Captain Dantes, I believe you. If you have been culpable, it was at worst imprudent. Give me the letter you have brought from Elba and go and rejoin your friend. Why, well, you have it already, monsieur. It's with the other papers that were taken from me. Am I free now? Uh, to whom is it addressed? Uh, Monsieur Noirtier, Rue Coqueron, Paris. Monsieur Noirtier, number 13, Rue Coqueron. Why, yes. And you know him, then? No. A faithful servant of a king does not know conspiracies. This is a conspiracy? But I've already told you, however, monsieur, that I'm entirely ignorant of what the letter uh, possess. Yes, but you know the name of the person to whom it was addressed. Well, I was forced to read the address to know who to give it to. Have you shown this letter to anyone? To no one, on my honour. Everybody is ignorant that you are the bearer of a letter from the Isle of Elba addressed to Monsieur Noirtier. Everybody. Except the person who gave it to me. But what's the matter, monsieur? And uh, do you doubt me? Well, question me, I'll answer you. Sir, I am no longer able, as I had hoped, to restore you to liberty immediately. Oh, but monsieur... But I have confidence in you, and have shown it in my behaviour towards you. Yes, monsieur, you have been more of a friend than a judge. The principal charge against you is this letter. And you see? You see? Monsieur... I destroy it. Your goodness itself, monsieur. You can now have confidence in me after what I have done. Well, order me and I'll obey. You and I alone know of its existence. If you therefore are questioned, deny all knowledge of it. Well, fear not, I will deny it. This was the only letter you had? It was. Swear it. I swear. He is to be detained in the Palais de Justice until this evening. I go with him. Yes, monsieur. God forgive me. Look at that. He must have a good conscience. Here, you! Wake up! Am I free? Not yet. You're to come with us. On whose orders? The deputy public prosecutor. Oh, then I'm ready. for me. Yeah, this carriage is for you.
to see you. Comrade, I'm a loyal Frenchman. I, I am Captain Dantes. I swear to you, if you tell me where we're going, I will submit to my fate. Go on. There's no harm in telling him now. Ah, you're a native of Marseille, a sailor. You must know where we're going. No! Try that again, sailor, and you'll get a bullet through your skull. I'm a knight. I know nothing about him. That's none of our business. I've got a letter here for the governor. What's going on out there? Oh, a gendarme with a prisoner. Let them in. Massier, stand by. We're visitors. And who is this? Another traitor. I warn you, he's a desperate fella. Wanted to swim back to Marseille. <laughs> oh, they all feel like that when they know they're coming here. No man ever broke free from this place. I have a letter for the governor. Ah, it's late to disturb him now. I'll give it to me in the morning. What about the prisoner? Jules, show this gentleman to his room. Yeah, Massier, yeah, you go with them. You'll have to sign for him, Corporal. Ah, you come into the guard room first. You shall have a glass of wine, oh. and then you shall have my signature. Well, I won't uh, say no to that after that. Come on, yes, you. Yes, drink's just the thing.
de Villefort. Yes, mademoiselle, I'm he. To whom have I the honor? I am the bride of Captain Dantes. Oh, yes. I cannot help you, mademoiselle. Oh, but you must. You must. He's done nothing wrong. I'm sorry to disagree with you, mademoiselle. The young man you speak of is a great criminal. Edmore, criminal? It isn't true. You're making a dreadful mistake, monsieur. I do not make mistakes. I judge only on the evidence before Then the evidence lies. I am in haste. There is nothing I can do for Edmond. Have pity, monsieur. At least tell me where he is. We were to have been married today. I am sorry for you. I can only repeat I cannot help you. But he is alive. But tell me he will not die. I can tell you nothing, for I do not know. He is no longer in my hands. May God punish you. You are the criminal. So you're the new bird in the cage. Have you slept? I uh, don't know. Are you hungry? Well, is there anything you want? I wish to see the governor. I'm afraid that's not possible. I must see the governor. Look, I know how it is on your first day here. You must have courage. I'll always do what I can for then you. Then take me to the governor. I've already told you that's not I possible. I wish to see the governor. Don't try my patience too hard. Or you'll get nothing. Not even food. I'll die. Oh, now, look, if you carry on like this, you'll be mad in a fortnight. If you behave yourself, you'll have leave to walk about the fortress. Sooner or later, you'll meet the governor. If he chooses to talk with you, well, that's uh, his affair. How long must I wait? Oh, hard to say. A month. Six months, year... Too long! I must see him now! No, no, I must see him now! Do you understand? I, I, look, uh, next time you're in Marseille, find out a young girl named Mercedes. She lives in the Catalan. Look, I, I'll give you a hundred crowns if you'll just tell her where I am. That's all I'm asking of you. You ask too much. If she knows you, you can be sure she's under police surveillance. If I was but seen talking to her. Oh, no, I, I couldn't risk it. I'll kill you! Help! 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 Oh, thanks, friends. I'll kill you! He's mad already. You shall see, old governor. We uh, have a madman here. Shall we take him to the governor? Yeah, sure, by all means, let's take him to the governor. I shan't feel safe until we do. Get up. <laughs> 